What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency exclusively on DTube and Steemit. I don't have to give a shit about getting demonetized just because of curse words or whatever it is that they don't like over there at YouTube. Alright, today I want to talk about using a Gecko trading bot and never lose a trade with the Gecko trading bot. I'm going to show you guys how to do exactly that via any indicators at all. So I'm making it really simple, but it, it does go through the process of checking. So as you see, this is a boilerplate strategy. They show you that there's different functions in here. And then if you go below that, they have a basic exa strategy example, which they show you when it buys and sells. Don't use this one, obviously. This one only works one time. If you need Gecko to trade for you one time, this is a strategy to use. But what you really want to do is build a strategy that works on its own every single candle so that Gecko is trading for you instead of trading once and going to sleep. So you want it to trade for you or at least keep watching the market for you if it's not trading because it's waiting for a perfect time to trade. So what you really have to understand is these four functions within the strategy file. So each of these strategies is just a JavaScript file. The four functions here are very important. The init function, the update function, the log function, and the check function. I have to say though, they are very important, but really it's just the init function and the check function, probably the one that I will show mostly today. The update and the log function basically is like this. The init function is when you first start up the strategy, running it through back tests or running it through a, a trading bot, it'll start up and run any any commands that need to run on the init function side. After that, it'll go through the update, the log and check, and then it'll repeat itself back at one. So every single candle, every new candle that's created, it'll go through the one, two, three. It's a cycle. It just repeats itself after that. So every cycle goes through this whole process and repeats itself again and again and again. So definitely read through this, understand it, and know what each part does. And the next thing is, let's understand how the MACD strategy works. So now that you read through this particular page, you really should read through the MACD JavaScript file that's actually provided to you by the Gecko trading bot. And you'll see what it does within each of the functions. Like you see in the init function, it creates an array of variables. Right off the bat, it's not easy because it's using an array. If people that are not familiar programming, you probably have to look that up and understand it. Uh, but just know that this is a way for Gecko to store this information about the direction, the duration, and if it's if a particular trend is persisting. And then you'll see that it's actually adding the indicator, it's adding the required history. So how long does it take? How long does it have to wait before it begins trading? And you'll see in the update method, it actually does nothing. So it's actually not doing anything at all within this particular strategy, even though it's part of the cycle of things that's supposed to do. So update, log, and check. So in the log function, is actually putting this information in the terminal. So it's letting you know the short, the long, the MACD, the signal, and the MACDIF, which from my knowledge is really just a histogram. So they call it the MACDIF, I call it the histogram. So anyway, the check function is where everything happens, where it's actually detecting the trend and stuff. As you can tell, this is getting very complicated. I was really confused reading through this file several times. I couldn't understand it until I did this. I went to the site code to flow which basically just breaks it down for you in terms of how a particular function works. I mean, it breaks down for you this way though, by you writing your own code. So I have to have write my own code of how I understand it working. I wrote it all out in pseudocode and it understood it in that format and I'm able to see the flow of the entire function of the method check. It's not easy to understand, but once you've written out this way, it's a lot easier to understand. But then when I've read, written it out, I realized this. So it has three trends. It defines three trends, bow, bear, or no trend at all. So that's the three trends right here, as you can see. So what it does, it goes through the true false. If it hits a certain threshold, it's saying that it's either in a upward trend or a downward trend or in a no trend. So that's how I understand that there's three different trends. And from that point on though, I realized that it's messy and redundant. I mean, this is from a junior iOS dev perspective. I mean, I could be wrong, but if you look through this uh, graph right here, this whole entire set of commands or functions or code, lines of code, these are all lines of code, is duplicated over here again. So 
never want to duplicate yourself. If you can simplify your code, condense it, reduce it as much as possible, I mean, you should. I don't know why they don't do it here. Again, this might be related to how JavaScript is written. Um, I have some background JavaScript, but then I haven't touched it in a long time. And I'm just looking at it compared to I'm looking at it compared to how I learned iOS development. This is really messy, at least the way I'm told, and I, the way I learned it. So, and that's where it comes down to because it's so messy and redundant. There's a bug when switching trends. At least that's from what I tested. You guys can do your own testing and see if you can find it. So my understanding is I think when it switches from a no trend to one of the trend directions, it end up giving a sell order. At least that's my that's my understanding. I. I saw it briefly, I didn't really look into it further just because after seeing how this entire code was written, I just decided to write my own code. I didn't really bother to look into it further, but I'm pretty sure there is a bug. It's basically causing additional trades to happen when it's not supposed to. That's my understanding. You guys should definitely look into it if you want to. Really just, you know, try to solve your own puzzle here because this is really a puzzle, right? But now I've talked about the MACD strategy and how messy it is. Why, why don't we try to create our own never lose strategy. So the first thing you have to do creating your own strategy is really writing the pseudocode. And it's really simple. I mean, it's just, I'm calling this strategy the step gains. I've seen in YouTube videos for other trading bots before. The idea is you want to wait till the market falls down and you don't have to actually. Some bots just buy in right away. And what they do is they buy in right away. They wait till the market goes up 2% or 3%, they'll sell. And then after a certain duration, they'll buy back in and they'll wait for a 2% gain again, and they will sell again. So that is the general idea of this code. So and that's why I basically written now here the basic if, the if statements that I understand. So what I said was, the first statement is, if watch price equals zero, set watch price to 90% of the current price. So what I want to do is set a position where it begins, at, when it first begins, it automatically adds the current price as the watch price. It watch for like a current price of 98% of the current price, of the current price because it wants to wait till the current price drops 2%. The next thing is if the current price is less than or equal to the watch price, set the lowest price to equal to the current price. So what this does right now is that if the current price now drops to the watch price, we're going to set the lowest price equal to the current price. Now we know that from where we started, it has hit the lower price that we want, which is 2% lower. So this is good. So now if current price is greater than the lower price, lowest price, send buy signal, set advice to true, and set sell price to current price times 1.03. So what it does right now is, now that we saw it come down and it's come back up again, so it's realized, okay, it's not falling anymore. It's, it's it came down, but it's not continually falling. So it means it's coming back up now. As soon as it's coming back up from that lowest price that we saw, buy in. So that's what I'm telling you to do, buy in. And then set advice to true is meaning to it's like a, a it's a flag basically to let it know that we have sent out the signal. Now you don't want to buy in anymore because you have nothing to buy. That's one thing with the gecko trading bot. Again, you are all in or all out. You're always buying everything in or selling everything at once. So once you send the signal to buy, you don't want to send another buy signal. It just doesn't make sense to the bot would just ignore it. But it's really it will be hard for you to calculate. That's really why you don't want to send additional buy signals. So that's why I set the advice to true, meaning I sent the signal already, sent the advice already to the bot to say buy. Now what it, then I do is set the sell price to the current price times 1.03. So meaning that I'm gonna wait for a 3% gain before I sell. And the last if statement is if the current price is greater than the sell price, so the greater than 3% gain, then send a sell signal and then reset everything basically. Set the watch price equal zero, set the lowest price equal zero, set the sell price equal zero, and set advice to false because once we advise it to sell, so we exit our position. So that's why you set a device to false and just basically reset everything. So that is the idea with this code. And the main key part of the last one is that it'll never sell unless the price is higher than the sell price. So that means you'll never make a losing trade with this code. At least that's my understanding. Again, this is what I'm showing you guys. This is not financial advice, even though this is how the code is written. You guys should do your own writing of your own code. I don't want to be responsible for any gains or losses that you guys have. After I've written out the pseudo code, I then have to implement it in the actual code. There's only really two things that you really need is obviously the variables. So I added these variables up here. 
I'm not sure if they are the right place to, correct, to add them. Right now, they do work because I added them as global variables, meaning they work outside the function. They basically are part of the JavaScript file, but they're outside of all the functions. So any of these functions here, any of these methods here, can access any of these variables. There's no access controls to them. So yes, it is supposedly dangerous to do it this way. As an iOS developer, I wouldn't do it this way. But then again, this is not an iOS app. So this is just something that is specifically restricted to your own computer and hopefully your computer is secured enough that it doesn't get hacked. I added these four values global variables, the watch price, the lowest price, the sell price, and the advice. And you have to define them at first like every other programming language I work with. You have to define them first, make sure they're defined, otherwise the programming language wouldn't know what they are, what type they are. So I define them as floating numbers for the first three and a boolean for the last. Again, if none of this is familiar to you, you definitely should look into some JavaScript 101 or some other any other language really this is like C++ C or iOS Swift whatever it is so that you can understand the basics of programming so once I set the variables I then wrote out the function I wrote out those if statements right over here in the check function that's all I basically did I just basically written out all these four if statements in code and that's basically it it's really relatively simple I added some log.debug statements so that it was sent out to the terminal letting me know that it bought at a certain price, it sold at a certain price and that's very simple so I can see in the terminal when it actually happened then I can double check that against what's shown on Gecko because the Gecko UI they actually show you as well when it bought and when it sold so you would know but I just want to double check that and make sure that it's working on both ends and that's basically the function is much more simpler than the MACD that they have which had like trends and directions and advice I mean advice I have in mind too but like the duration you don't need any of that stuff this is like your first strategy that you want to write you want to make it as simple as possible while making it work and that's what I did here so now that you wrote the strategy you defined it to never sell when current price is less than the purchase price and you have fall in love with conditional statements again because what i wrote is again is relatively simple just four if statements if you really want to look into get more detail about how if statements work definitely read through something like this javascript if else statements which should really help you understand how to write if else statements and really fall in love with it because it's it can get confusing sometimes. So after you've written out the things, so you need to backtest, 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 backtest some more because I backtested this strategy tons of times and this is a, the, pretty much the first strategy that I've written out and it works so I just want to make sure it works before I start trading with it. So let me show you how it looks like in terms of backtesting it but before I show you how it works and how it looks in Gecko, I just want to show you, so I already set up everything in terms of the backtest portion right here, the, da the data set, and I select the particular uh, date range. Just want to show you in terms of the MACD how it works and how bad it works currently because I think there is a bug in there. I mean, I'm setting it to one minute candle sizes, so it really trades a lot. So this is what happened. It traded 1,995 times at a 63% loss because trading every other minute. And you see it making tons of losses throughout. It makes some gains too here and there. But it's a lot and lots of losses. Let me go ahead and bring up the strategy that I just wrote, step gains. Watch, I wrote it a little while back. But I just want to show you guys how it works. So I'm just going to run it. So I finished running. And this is what did. Nine trades. And it made 61% profit. Which is ridiculously much better than the MACD did. And all that was just basically enter and sell pretty much within a day. So, well, this one lasted six days. It actually held six days. Didn't really like that too much. But again, you see, each one of these trades were profitable. It never had a loss. So, now what it is is after it bought in, after it made the eight trades, you see a total of nine trades. So, it buy, so, buy, so, so, total of eight times. So, it, it entered and exited a total, it traded eight times. And the ninth time, it bought in and then it didn't sell. So it's just stay in the market and then you end up earning an extra amount, uh, a huge amount. So probably something might be an issue with something I have programmed in here, but for right now it just works. I tested it multiple times. The main key point is this, it never makes a losing trade. And that's what you have to know. So that's one thing that a lot of people that started using Gecko for, from the very beginning, myself included, I was super frustrated with Gecko when I first used it because it was making losing trades. 
now with this particular strategy or with a strategy that you guys create that won't sell if it's a losing trade, you at worst will be holding bags, but at least you won't be losing money. So that is pretty much it, guys. Just want to show you guys. Just want to let you guys know the bottom line for this. So the bottom line is this. This is relatively easy for people with coding background. If you don't have it, it just means you have to do more research and reading. Think of this as a game. In order to beat it, you have to keep practicing. But even when you know what you're doing, know that you have real money on the line once you start your bot. So ask yourself, what are the consequences? So that's my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment, upvote, re-steam. Let everyone know about my video. Share my video. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth finding, it isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.